Welcome back to The Ed Show. I was in Buffalo, New York on Saturday night for a town hall meeting, the 2009 Tour for Change, The Ed Schultz Show. Now, we had a great turnout, a very passionate crowd at Canisius College and a heated discussion on health care reform. And uh, after all the effort to get President Obama elected and the Democrats in the majority, the folks, I think, are getting pretty impatient. There is a growing frustration in the middle class that many people felt that the Democrats right now are just caving in on the issue, that they're not pushing hard enough. And throughout my entire career, I've always been one to take the microphone to the people. Saturday night, the people in Buffalo, New York, spoke up. For weeks, I have felt this undercurrent on the radio that Americans are getting frustrated with just how nice and how weak the majority party is acting in Washington. They've got to get a spine. I tell you, the message is very clear on three things. Forget bipartisanship, get it done on health care, and Democrats, you need to grow a pair. I am very disappointed. I'm a lifelong Democrat, but they just have no spine. They're just wussing out, I guess is the word. You know, they're, they're just backing down. They seem to be afraid of, uh, of the Republicans, of Limbaugh, of Cheney. They're just afraid they're going to ruffle them up a little bit. I really, really think that, that uh, he's listening to the wrong people. I know, he's, I know he's trying to act like Lincoln, and I know he's trying to bring everybody to get everybody's opinion. But as he goes around the country, people want single payer and they better start listening or we'll throw them all out throw them all out holy smokes joining me now is new york congressman eric massa some of his outspoken constituents were at the town hall meeting on saturday night congressman good to have you with us but i have to tell you i think there is a real disconnect with some of the folks in your district and what is happening at the white house they don't feel they're pushing hard enough and they think the democrats are getting spineless on this public option and going strong enough what's your take well, Ed, first, it's great to be here, and I've got to tell you, a lot of things have been said about me, but spineless has never been one of them. And, and I, frankly, I've got a pair of shoes and hands and feet, and we're here to give the back to the White House so that single payer has a seat at this table of national debate. I've said that for five years. I'll continue to campaign and to represent that as a member of Congress. It seems like single payer, is the, this is the phrase that we can't use, that it's never going to be on the table, that it can't work. What is your definition of a, bu of a public option? But most of all, if I put it this way, do you think that the Republicans in any way, shape or form will allow competition to be given to the insurance industry as strong as that lobby is? No, of course they won't allow competition. This is coming from a group of people who call themselves capitalists who believe in competition. It's just not in the competition in the sector they may fund their campaigns or rob tens or if not hundreds of millions of dollars out of the back pocket of Americans who need health insurance. Let's be very clear about something, Ed. If the private for profit Profit, health insurance industry was working. We wouldn't be having this conversation because oh, yeah. 52 million Americans wouldn't be without health insurance. So as they say sometimes, the proof is in the reality of the failure of the system, which is what brought me to politics and which gives me the strength to stand on this issue and deliver this message. Well, I want to tell you that your constituents speak very highly of you, and, and I know that you, you are aggressive on this. But the bottom line here is, is that this, in the sound chamber, what a lot of lefties in this country are hearing, and a lot of people who are in the middle of the road that want something done when it comes to health care reform, they keep hearing this, we don't have the votes. We don't have the votes. How the hell do you know, you know whether you got the votes or not if you don't even know what the public option's going to be yet? Will someone answer that? So this is what we're asking for, to be part of the debate. Uh, I am willing to go anywhere to speak to any group, always focusing on my district, but taking this message wherever it will be heard. Because frankly, ask any retired American today, they're very satisfied with their public option. Ask any veteran in American today, they're very happy with their public option. Ask any military retiree, they're happy with their public option. But here's the most important thing, Ed. <laughs> ask any member of Congress, because members of Congress have access to the most incredible public option available. I have refused to accept the Congressional Health Care Benefits Plan until all Americans have access to that very same public option. I mean what I say about it, and I say what I mean, and we're going to go move forward. You do not take your health care benefit in the Congress? No, I do not. 
Are you willing on this show tonight to challenge the rest of the members of the Congress to do the same thing until we get something passed in this country? Because if you did, you'd be the greatest American on TV today. Well, I, not only have I and not only do I, it, I don't know whether it makes me the greatest American on TV, uh, but it makes me a very lonely person at the dinner table sometime in the congressional dining room. This is not about uh, it, what we're supposed to get as members of Congress. And by the way, make it very clear, I stood on the floor of the House. I said I will not take the congressional insurance program. I think that every member of Congress ought to examine that, and it's an individual decision. But this isn't about us. It's about us being sent to Washington to do what's right for the people who have elected us. It's a very clear mandate. Darn be darned about what the future of elections are going to be. If everyone's focused on whether or not they're going to go to Washington and get reelected, we get a self-perpetuating system. I'm focused on doing what I said I would do, and that's to bring access to quality health care to every single American citizen in this nation. Congressman Massa, you belong, my friend, in the United States Senate. You keep <laughs> fighting. You keep fighting because you, you, you're right where the people are right now, and I appreciate your time tonight on the program. Thank you, Ed. Let me get very clear. I am the one member of the New York congressional delegation who is not running for the United States Senate. <laughs> Congressman Massa, thanks so much. Thank you, Ed. Let's turn to our panel now. We found one Democrat out there, one progressive who's got a spine. You just heard him. Here's another one. Stephanie Miller, syndicated radio talk show host. Also, Jack Rice, former CIA agent, is with us tonight. And Heidi Harris is a, a uh, talk show host on AM 720 KDWN in Las Vegas. Stephanie, good to have you on the program tonight. What are you hearing from your listeners? Are, are the, are the, do they believe that the Democrats are going to get this, or should I say the majority party, are they going to get this thing done for the people? You know, Ed, I got to tell you, I agree with you. Whatever health care plan we decide on, I hope it includes a spinal transplant for Democrats. I know you were in my hometown of Buffalo ripping it up this weekend, and that's the exact same thing I hear on my radio show, the same thing you're hearing. The, the American people are more liberal than the Democrats in Congress. I heard Howard Dean say today, Ed, we don't need Republican votes. And this co-op plan, this watered-down thing, is not going to work. We need a public plan. Heidi, is there any room for negotiation at all for the conservatives when it comes to a public option? Or is that, let's put it this way, off the table? Well, they don't care. They don't need us. See, that's the whole point. So what I think should happen is the Democrats should go ahead and pass this, and then they will own it. And the Republicans can actually make a difference in 2010 and regain the majority, which they will when people realize it's basically government-sponsored socialized medicine. And they will not be happy with it, but the Democrats have to take all the blame for this. That'd be perfect. Is it socialized medicine, Jack Rice, or do you think the American people are willing to give this a chance? Oh, the American people need to give this a chance. Come on, one in six Americans right now don't have insurance. There's millions more who don't have enough insurance. That's the number one reason that people actually file for bankruptcy. The need is so desperate right now. The system is so so flawed, so broken, that they need something. And it's very clear to everybody who's ever faced the real problem. Everybody. Question comes up, how are we going to pay for it? That question was posed on Meet the Press yesterday by David Gregory to the Vice President of the United States. Here it is. Will the president sign a bill that taxes health care benefits for employees? We made it clear we do not think that is the way to go. We think that is the wrong way to finance this legislation. So if the bill but comes with that, no, the president no, no, wouldn't no, sign it? No, I didn't it. say that. We'll have to see what the whole bill says. But we made it clear. We do not believe you should be taxing, taxing the benefits that people receive through their employers now. Heidi Harris, what's your response to that? You trust uh, the administration on that? Of course I don't. Of course I'm going to raise taxes. They're going to have to. You know, the reality is it's not going to save anybody money long term to do this kind of program. You talk about inefficiencies. Of course there are inefficiencies. But government taking over, are you kidding? Government doesn't do anything well. They won't do this well, and it's a scary prospect. Besides that, the main reason they're doing this is to ace out the insurance companies. Government's going to come in. They're going to put a program together that will be easily affordable for everybody. Get everybody on that and eliminate the insurance companies. That's socialized medicine. That is scary. Stephanie, what do you think? And see, this is the problem with bipartisanship with our friends like Heidi and Rush Limbaugh. Is she just said she wants health care to flail and then Democrats own it. Don't we all as Americans want to fix this health care system? I would think so. Jack <laughs> Rice, uh, where is the political opening for the Republicans here? 
If the American people want a public option, and the latest numbers out there are 64%, if they want it, why don't they just get on board with it? Yeah, you know why? Because they're trying to find the political lever that they have, and they don't have much. I mean, here's the funny thing the Republicans have actually been arguing. They've been saying that if you get this new system, it will be, it will be such a disaster that America will fail. Um, that's on one side. Then the, the other side is it's going to be so good that the private industry will fail. So which one is it? It's going to be so good or it's going to be so bad. It's going to be one or the other. I'm really confused. Heidi, what is your solution? <laughs> no, I didn't say it was good. I said that the government is going to offer a program that's going to be very inexpensive initially, and basically people are going to choose to give up their private insurers, they'll get on the government plan, and then the taxes will go through the roof, and we'll all be waiting in line. You've got to have private insurance to cover this. You can't put everybody on the government dole because you're going to wind up with rationing well, the, the health care system. The president did say that if you like what you have, you can keep it. Nobody's going to twist your arm no, on no. this. I don't believe that, Ed, and I'll t because of the reason I, I illustrated. They're going to make it so inexpensive that people are going to go, wow, I can save money if I go on the government's plan, and they're going to purposely give up their Blue Cross, Blue Shield shield or whoever they have and go on the government okay. plan and those companies will go bankrupt so those Stephanie, won't even be around. Stephanie, is this a Trojan horse to socialize medicine? Is it a Trojan horse to single payer? It is not. I don't see how much more clearly the president can explain it. Ed, Ed, Heidi, public option. The second part of that phrase is option. The president keeps saying if you like what you have, you can keep it. What's so hard about that?